The chaos and confusion of everyday life can get us focusing on everything that's going wrong. Therefore, it's easy to overlook some of the fantastic new discoveries that have been made just this year. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent interesting discoveries that had been made in 2020. Radiocarbon Dating of the Cloth In an attempt to put the matter of whether the Shroud of Turin was really a 1st century original or a Middle Ages reproduction to rest, the Catholic Church permitted the radiocarbon dating of the Shroud in the 1980s, once technology had advanced far enough that removing a large piece of cloth was not necessary. To make the radiocarbon dating as valid and incontestable as possible, the Vatican allowed the process to be open and observable. Present at the removal of the sample was the Archbishop of Turin Cathedral, physicists, representatives from the three labs that would be dating the shroud, the textiles experts who could verify that the sample was taken from the original portions of the cloth, not a later repair. A small 10mm by 70mm sample was taken away from any damaged patches or charred areas and split into three portions, which was then sealed in aluminium foil inside stainless steel chambers to prevent contamination. The entire process was watched by multiple witnesses, as well as thoroughly documented through pictures and videos in an attempt to validate the process through which the sample was taken and prevent the need for a future sample to be taken for testing, if at all possible. Two containers were also similarly packaged with a control cloth and given to laboratories, which were not told whether they had the real shroud or a control group. However, these controls were easily identifiable as not from the ancient shroud due to the unique weave of the cloth and the process of identifying their origins was not completed. Although the three laboratories agreed not to share their results among each other until the final conference and relabeled the samples so that technicians did not know where the cloth came from. All of this was in an attempt to eliminate any bias that a scientist or laboratory could have in skewing the results, as well as to validate whatever results were released. Once the final results were released, each laboratory presented roughly the same origin estimate, with not much of a difference to be considered significant. Conclusively, all three laboratories demonstrated a 95% confidence that the linen that was tested originated between 1260 to 1390, rounding up or down to the nearest 10 years. Therefore, the shroud was determined to date back to the Middle Ages, supporting the theory of a clever forgery. Unfortunately, despite the elaborate measures taken to validate whatever findings emerged, believers in the divine provenance of the shroud found a plethora of reasons to doubt the studies, citing contamination of the fibres and a host of other reasons. The debate raged on in forums and papers concerning the shroud, and many take the radiocarbon dating as a mere suggestion. Thus, what was intended to be a key step in determining the authenticity of the shroud once and for all ended up being a source just as hotly debated as the shroud itself. Excalibur Sword Throughout history, many tales have arisen of individuals who claimed to have found the real Excalibur, and whilst we all may have heard of the world's most iconic sword, presumably fewer of us are familiar with the real tales, and what could be the most magical artifact on earth should it truly exist. The sword was first introduced to the world in Geoffrey of Monmouth's History of the Kings of Britain, where it was known as Caliburnus. Excalibur then became ingrained in our history when it was brought forward by Sir Thomas Mallory in Le Morte di Arthur, which was first published in 1485 CE, where Excalibur and King Arthur were paired together for the foreseeable future. This legendary artifact was then passed down through new editions, legends, retellings, rewrites, and adaptations, though many of the magical properties and rules vary drastically within each variation, many do remain the same. One consistent element is that Excalibur is from a different realm, world, or another variation of this, essentially meaning it was not crafted on Earth. While it is a key trait to the legend, this trope is not exclusive to Excalibur, as many famous swords follow similar unknown magical origin stories. Excalibur's power has developed its reputation as the best of swords. It is this power that prevents Arthur's defeat 
in many retellings. Now, Excalibur is a symbol of virtue and power. Another common rule to Excalibur has been that the sword's power aids not only in a win in confrontations, but that you also win the right to rule over Britain. Today, we often hear claims of Excalibur being found, with many people claiming to have pulled the sword from the stone. Despite their frequent combination, the Excalibur sword and the sword in the stone are two distinct legends. Others claim to have found Excalibur in bodies of water, apparently left there by the Lady of the Lake. In 2017, a young girl made this claim, and in 2019, a team of archaeologists allegedly found the sword at the bottom of the Vrabas River. With these endless claims of supposed discoveries, will we end up dismissing someone? Should they stumble across the true Excalibur? Ozone Hole near South Park shrinks to smallest size ever. Humanity's impact on the Earth is well known, and our impact on the ozone layer is one that has incited significant action since it was growing year on year. In 2019, the hole in the ozone layer near the South Pole shrunk to its smallest size since 1982. It is not actually a hole, but merely an area with depleted levels of ozone specifically an area in which ozone concentrations drop below the historical threshold of 222 Dobson units. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, polar orbiting satellites are used to monitor the ozone hole. According to NASA and the NOAA, the Antarctic ozone hole was affected by abnormal weather patterns in 2019, limiting ozone depletion which led to the smallest ozone hole since 1982. Ozone, which is comprised of three oxygen atoms, occurs naturally in the stratosphere and adds protection to the planet from ultraviolet solar radiation, which can cause cataracts and skin cancer. Stratospheric ice clouds form in the Antarctic when temperatures fall below minus 78 Celsius, and these clouds promote production of chlorine and bromine, which when combined with sunlight in the Antarctic spring causes a reaction that leads to a loss of ozone, resulting in the Antarctic ozone hole. The annual ozone hole reached its peak extent of 6.3 million square miles on September 8, 2019, and then shrank to less than 3.9 million square miles for the remainder of September and October. Unusually warm weather led to the smaller ozone depletion. Similar weather patterns in 1988 and 2002 also resulted in atypically small ozone holes. Normal weather conditions tend to result in a maximum area of about 8 million square miles in late September or early October. The 2019 weather systems were unusually strong, warming the Antarctic stratosphere. It was 16 Celsius warmer than average during September, a time where ozone destruction is normally at its peak. According to NASA, it was the warmest September for 40 years. The Antarctic polar vortex was also weakened, moving its centre, which is normally over the South Pole. This slowed vortex rotation, allowing air to sink in the lower stratosphere, which impacted the ozone hole in two ways. It minimised the persistence of polar stratospheric clouds and allowed ozone-rich air from elsewhere in the southern hemisphere to travel to above the Antarctic ozone hole area. There is a massive variability each year with the size of the ozone hole. Whilst 2019 was the smallest on record since 1982, the 2020 hole is above average for the last decade. On September 20, 2020, the annual ozone hole reached its peak area at 9.6 million square miles, driven by persistent cold temperatures and strong circumpolar winds, similar to the value recorded in 2018. However, by approximately 2070, scientists expect the ozone hole to shrink back to the size it was in 1980.